Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jesse, and today I'm going to be reacting to and trying not to crumble over you guys roasting some of my favorite books. I went over on my Instagram, at Jesse the Reader, if you want to follow me, and I asked you guys to roast some of my favorite books, and roast them you guys did. I've tried not to look at some of the messages because I want to just like have an authentic reaction here on camera, but some of them, some of them, it's like y'all were ready to lash out on my favorite books. I typically pride myself on being somebody who was like open to like different differing opinions like I am a-okay when somebody doesn't like my favorite book but I feel like a lot of the responses I got felt like very targeted attacks and some of them hurt me so this video is going to be interesting it's going to be putting me to the ultimate test can I really handle differing opinions about books that I love we'll find out today <laughs> let's get started I'm scared I'm a little terrified right now the invisible life of Addie LaRue more like the not like other girls bible honestly T. You're not wrong. Like, listen, I love The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, but Addie LaRue definitely has that presence where she's like, I'm not like all the other girls. But let's be real here. Addie LaRue is not like all the other girls. Addie LaRue is immortal. She's living forever. What other girls be doing it like that? If I was Addie LaRue, I'd probably also have the not like other girls syndrome. To be honest, to be frank, and I love Victoria Schwab, and Victoria Schwab I trust, but I feel like a lot of her characters actually fall under this category. Specifically, a lot of her female characters fall into the I'm not like all the other girls trope. It's not like they outright say that line, I'm not like all the other girls, but it's one of those things where you wouldn't put it past them if they did say that line. The age gap between Jacob and Emma in Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children was weird. Yes, this is something that I agree with. This is a critique that often pops up and often people bring it to me and I'm like, duh, it's weird, hello. Like Emma is technically the same age as Jacob. Jacob's grandfather. So yes, this is strange. I feel like I'm making this sound so bad. Like Emma is not a grandma. She is technically a grandma's age, but she lives in a time loop. So she's like forever the same age within this time loop, but that doesn't make it better. And I've also had weird feelings about their relationship. Trust me. And I feel like Ransom Riggs himself also realized that it was a bit odd and a bit pushing the limit in having that age gap relationship within his series. And you see that if you have read the extension, I'm not going to go into spoilers here, but maybe read books four, five, and six and come back to me. If anyone bashes the miracles of the Namiya General Store, block them. You get it. That's like one of my like top tier favorite books. Like a lot of these are favorite books, books that I love, but they're like not top tier favorite books. Like a lot of them are just favorite books. And then there's some that are top tier favorite books. I don't know if you guys have tiers, tier favorites, but I definitely do. And the miracles of the Namiya General Store is just one of those books where for me, it's just like near perfection. Like it just has every element of a book that I love within it. And you are a red flag if you don't like that book. But it's also okay if you don't like that book. It's just personally for me, I'm just like, red flag, I can't take book recommendations from you. Mm -mm. 300 years and you never went to Japan? Come on, Addy. Like, WTF? You know, now that you mention it, Addy, we need to have a talk. But also if you've lived for 300 years and you haven't touched foot in every bit of the world, like... That's inexcusable to me. What have you been doing? Unless you've been spending 300 years just reading books that I can get on board with Addie. That's okay. That I will excuse. Do your thing. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. You enjoy books with characters that can live for 300 plus years yet still stay the same. You see, this is one take where I strongly disagree. I feel like Addie does change, at least from like the beginning of the book when we see her before and then when we see her in her current state. And also, I factor in the fact that Addie, one, has been living for 300 years, two, people that she meets and encounters every day forget her. Do you know how taxing that must be on Addie to not have anybody remember who she is? Like, that must be so hard. And I feel like we see that affect her and her personality in the book. And I feel like people come for this specific aspect of Addie. And I feel like this is one aspect that I just like cannot get on board with. Like, I feel like if I was in Addie's shoes, I would be just like her. I would be numb to everything. I would just be going through the motions. I would probably be depressed. Like, she doesn't have anybody that she is able to confide in. Because every person that she meets forgets her. Honestly, props to her for even being somewhat sane in the book. I would probably have 300 years of breakdowns. And this is not an attack on this person because I feel like this is a take that a lot of people have about Addie, but I, I just can't get on board with it. I just, I can't. Do it. It's about time I defend Addie. I feel like shots have been fired in her direction and I'm just now stepping in and being like, hold on, hold on. AJ Vickery was really good, but the pacing was off. Jumped way too quickly into the future. Didn't let us watch their relationship grow. That's as mean as I can be. This is a take that I actually understand and I can definitely see this perspective and kind of have an understanding for it. Because when I read AJ Vickery, I do remember that being a thing where we kind of like jump around pretty quickly and the pace overall is pretty fast. But I think that that's kind of why it worked for me. It was the first 
adult book, not the first adult book that I have ever read, but the first adult book that I felt kind of mimicked the style of a YA book in terms of pacing. And I loved that. I have grown to like appreciate slow paced books, but I also have to be in a specific mood to read slow paced books. Whereas when it comes to speedy pacing, I can have that all day, every day, baby. Okay. I totally understand this take though. And while I love this book and I felt like it was just so rich in terms of the characters, I do think it could have been richer had we seen more of the relationship growth throughout the book. So I get this take. I get it. Legendborn. Overhyped, over tropey, info dumping book about over touchy heroine who can fight like a pro after one training. <gasps> the burn the burn the burn i'm aware of this issue and i'm looking into it but i can't give any concrete details as of right now i don't want to do this anymore no but i'm gonna be so for real right now and so sassy and i'm so sorry about it and like your thoughts are valid and like there are things in there that i agree with like over tropey yeah info dumpy yeah but is it a fun good time yeah yeah it is it's a fun good time and i feel like i hardly ever see good things about legendborn like there was a wave of like hype and excitement for the book when it first came out then the hype died down and all these people came out of their caves and were like we hate legendborn and i was like whoa whoa where's this coming from mind you i read this book after the hype after all the criticism and i just had a silly goofy time with it and i think maybe because i went in with such low expectations i enjoyed it so much more and maybe that's because i took off my critical thinking cap while i was reading it and i just decided to have a good time with it are there problems yes there are problems with every book but i liked it it was fun and i feel like i'm being weirdly defensive and i'm gonna try to stop <laughs> miss peregrine's home for peculiar children was by far one of the the most nonsensical, dry, unimaginative books I've ever read. Throwing in a few creepy photos doesn't make it edgy or different, just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel right now. Remember, people are allowed to have their own opinions and feel some kind of way about your favorite books. They can still be your favorite books. It doesn't change anything. I'm taking a hug break where I just hug my favorite book and just think happy thoughts. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. This is one of those times where I'm realizing how different of an experience we can all have with a book. Like we can all read the same book and all just have such vastly different experiences with the book. Like pretty much everything you said, I feel the complete opposite about. <laughs> like nonsensical? Yeah, it's nonsensical. One, it's fantasy. Two, we've got a time loop, so we're time traveling. Three, we've got children with powers. There's gonna be some nonsense in there. Dry? The dry one I can kind of understand, especially like in the beginning portion, but like it picks up and gets wet unimaginative oh yeah we we think very differently about this book okay like very differently and that's okay because both of our opinions can exist i still feel like i'm coming off as super defensive i just like want to defend my favorite book but like again it's okay if we think differently we were liars more like we were boring i mean you're not wrong at all in the slightest like that book is definitely one where it's just like leading up to like the big thing at the end and honestly that like leading path to the end is not that interesting we're following a white rich family not very interesting but like there's something about it that i just like loved so much it's actually fascinating to me that like i love we were liars as much as i do and like maybe i would have a different experience with it now if i were to read it now also knowing the twist i feel like i would definitely have a different experience reading it now we were liars is one of those books where it goes against everything that i love in a book at least today the reader that i am today like it doesn't really have all the things that i love in a book the characters are not that strong in fact the characters are mild and boring <laughs> i'm gonna be honest and it's also not very plot driven either like it's almost one of those books where it's just kind of atmospheric in terms of like the eeriness and the mysteriousness and the richness like that's kind of the vibe like it's a very quiet book and then it gets loud at the end like that's the best way that i can explain we were liars is it one of those books that relies on shock factor yes it does but there's just something about it that i love it like i love the writing style and i also just like liked the vibe like it was just fun to kind of just have this kind of quiet mysterious ride and kind of the experience of trying to piece together what was going on and where we were going to end up at the time of reading this book i was not able to call the shots and figure out what was happening a lot of you guys replied and were like yeah i figured that out well i didn't i'm jealous of you you big brain people anyway Moving on. <laughs> Can you have a favorites list outside of the most book talk basic Rex, please? Listen, I'm sure that this was a lighthearted, funny joke, but let me just say, first off, first off, first off, first off, I love book talk. I respect book talk. I have nothing against book talk, but the quote unquote book talk books that blew up when book talk first became a thing already had a life on booktube before book talk came around. Again, I love and respect book talk. I have a book talk account, but like a lot of the books that blew up on book talk when it was like first a really big thing are books that booktubers have been reading 
reading and loving and recommending for years before Book Talk came around. So books like Shatter Me, They Both Die at the End, We Were Liars, Six of Crows, that is only touching the surface, but these books were popular before Book Talk came around. The Little Prince is just random words put together faking meaning. I feel like you just took my favorite book and ripped it in half right before my eyes and spit in my face afterwards to make me feel even better. I mean, every book ever is just putting random words together and just like hoping that something comes of it. I was surprised to see the amount of negative messages that came in for The Little Prince. I didn't realize there were so many of you that felt some kind of way about it. I thought it was like a well-loved, well-respected classic, but I love The Little Prince and it never to me felt like just random words strung together to fake meaning. Like I felt so much impact from that book. I do agree that the book at times feels very random, but like I just love the rich adventure and that sort of feeling of what it's like to grow up and just like not know where life is going to take you and kind of the bumps in the road and losing that filter of life and how it can sometimes not be pretty. I don't know. Those are just like things that like this book made me think about and I really appreciated it. But I also like understand it's not for everybody. But I thought it was wholesome and I thought it was meaningful and it meant something to me. <laughs> I'm dying inside. Maybe not a roast, but a hot take. I didn't really feel the chemistry between Kaz and Inej. Ooh, interesting. I definitely kind of see this perspective in some kind of way. Like their chemistry is different than what we're normally presented with, in my opinion. Like I felt like their chemistry came through them like sharing in their like tough experiences growing up and the things that they've been through. It wasn't like they were having like cutesy banter and like flirting left and right because that's just like not how either of them operate, <laughs> obviously. Like that'd be weird. Kaz being flirty, I don't know that I want to see that. That might disrupt my image of him in my mind. So yeah, I disagree with this one just in the fact that like it wasn't a cliche sort of chemistry that we're used to seeing. It was a different type of chemistry. I feel like we need more variety in romances anyways. Like not everything can be a meet cute. Sometimes we need like a meet dark. Not where you meet in the dark, but like a dark situation brings you together. Moving on, I have read brochure pamphlets in a foreign language that were more engaging than we were liars. <laughs> Please <laughs> talk about a drag. Those must have been really thrilling brochures. And I'm glad that you enjoyed them over one of my favorite books. Hugo Cabret is the book elementary school kids read when they wanted to look smart. It's me. I did that. Listen, this is not why I read Hugo Cabret, but I do feel like if you've never looked inside the book of Hugo Cabret and you see someone reading it, you'd be like, oh my god, that's really impressive. They're reading a very thick book. Like, this is crazy. This is a thick book. If I saw a kid reading this book, I'd be like, dang, they're a reader. I can't even read books that long. But then like, if you look inside of it and realize that it's mostly made up of pictures, you're like, oh, never mind. Never mind, never mind. But also, I love this book. It's one of those books that like doesn't have magic within it, but like it feels very magical. So magical, so beautiful. Puddles on the road after a slight drizzle are less shallow than the characters from We Were Liars. Y'all did not come to play today, except you did come to play. You came to play with my emotions, but it's okay. I asked for it. I asked for this. Y'all really be hating We Were Liars. Oh my God. To be fair, I agree with this point. <laughs> Is it a savage point? Yes. But yeah, the characters are shallow. The characters do not really carry this book on their backs. The astonishing color of After is so boring, I almost couldn't finish. And after finishing, I couldn't remember anything from the book. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. The Astonishing Color of After is such a good book. Albeit, one of my biggest critiques of that book is that it's a little bit on the long side and it could have been condensed by like 200 pages. Like that book could have been a 300 page book and it would have been perfection. Up the pacing just a notch and we're golden. Golden. But I feel like for me, it's just not a book that I would forget. Like there's just so much meaning and heart and sadness in that book. And I just, it's, you see, you see what it did to me? It imprinted itself on my heart. But it's okay. You're, you're allowed to feel that way. You're allowed to feel that way. I just feel differently. <laughs> <laughs> Only Roast is recommending A Monster Calls is so cruel. You're the reason I read it and I cried so hard I was shaking. That's effing wrong and cruel. I will never apologize for recommending that book. I will apologize for the fact that it made you feel so strongly. But also, some of the best books are the books that move us to feel emotions and make us cry. <laughs> <laughs> The Lightning Thief. I don't understand how anyone older than 12 years old could enjoy it. The characters were just too plain and childish. I feel like even my six-year-old self wouldn't have enjoyed this book. I need a pillow to scream into. The Percy Jackson series is so fun, like aggressively fun. This video is causing me to do weird things, but like, 
it's just a silly goofy fun time and there's a lot of heart in it especially like as the series grows as the series grows as you like move on in the series like you just grow more attached to the characters the characters get even more fleshed out you have more experiences with the characters so it feels like you're going on this wild adventure with them and <laughs> also not to like drag you but you said the characters were childish well the characters are literally children <laughs> the characters in the percy jackson series are children what, what did you expect <laughs> what did you expect i totally understand not being able to like vibe with middle grade fiction i know that it's not for everyone especially when you're an adult but there's just something like just so wholesome and adventurous about middle grade books also in ya fantasy and adult fantasy i feel like there are oftentimes these just like aggressively in your face romances and sometimes i don't want that like sometimes i just want the adventure and the fun times with like a friendship group and i can more times than not get that with a middle grade fantasy book the last roast that i will be reacting to so i can find my soul and put it back into my body miss peregrine's isn't even a spooky book it's an aesthetic pretending to give me nightmares you see i understand why people go into miss peregrine's expecting it to be a spooky book because it's marketed in that way like it's pushed as a book that will give you the frights give you the creeps give you the chills but like no like yeah the monsters in it are somewhat spooky somewhat creepy but like they're not gonna like keep you up at night at least not me personally but i guess it really depends on like your fear level and like what scares you i personally didn't find them that scary did i find them intimidating yes wouldn't necessarily want to run into any of them on the streets nor thank you nor thank you but if you want a fun found family adventure through time loops going against these weird creepy bad guys miss peregrine's home for peculiar children is the book for you we have reached the end of this video and i don't think that i will ever do this video ever again <laughs> This was a draining experience and I think it's just because of the fact that like I'm not used to getting this much criticism on my favorite books all at once. Like I get it every now and then in little spurts but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I tried it and I will never do it again. <laughs> you live and you learn you know. You live and you learn. Let me know down below in the comments though how you guys feel about criticism on your favorite books. Like how do you deal with it? Are you somebody who is able to take criticism on your favorite books or are you like super defensive and you're like nope no 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 you're wrong i'm right that's that let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments if you like this video be sure to go and hit that like button if you want to see more bookish content from me be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time i post new videos as always thank you guys so much for watching i hope your day is bright that tomorrow is brighter keep reading what my heart does keep reading what my heart desires keep reading what your heart desires and i will see you soon with a new video <laughs> i am gonna keep reading what my heart desires though <laughs> even if you guys hate my favorite books <laughs> I'm dead. Bye, yo. I forgot to say bye, yo. Bye, yo. I am now going to just go lay all my favorite books on the floor and just take a nap on top of them. That's what I'm going to do now.